Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Toyota Camry. In addition to overrunning generator clutches and a very unstable drive belt resource on inline force, there is nothing to remember. With runs over 300,000, natural wear and tear appears on the wiring harnesses of the driver's door and trunk, and the fans start to work noisily, sometimes they get up. The fan of the climate control sensor and the climate control itself is buzzing. The cost of fixing these problems is penny. The tightness of the headlight connectors could be better, the fog lamp connector is more reliable, the horns are more airtight, the room lights are better sealed and the trunk lock is awesome. It is also desirable to do something with the oil pressure sensor so that it doesn't flow after 150,000, but in general it must be admitted that in terms of the quality of the electrics, Toyota is at its best. The brakes are strong and reliable, but not very powerful. It's easy to overheat the discs and it leaves them in this case the first time. However, the defect concerns only original parts. Installing a good non-original usually completely removes the problem. The resource of the pads could be even higher, especially on cars with 3.5 engines, where they often do not reach the third MOT test, and the interval for Toyota is 10,000. A slight corrosion of the brake pipes in the rear near the attachment points is also an unpleasant sign, but so far no crime. The suspension is considered a strong point of the model, it is both very resourceful and very comfortable, it can withstand even tough exploitation with trips along country roads. Often up to runs of 150 to 100,000 in city mode, everything is original, including shock absorbers. Unless the stabilizer bars are changed and even the stop bushings were out here, their preload is weak, it's better to put on glue. The supports of the front and rear suspensions with runs up to 100 fail only during extreme movement and wheel bearings only with highly non-standard rubber. A significant disadvantage is corrosion of almost all suspension elements, points of its attachment to the body and subframes, kidification of all fasteners, including adjusting bolts. Any repairs can end with exercises with the grainer and the burner and then the purchase of broken elements along the way. Also, the angles of the suspension installation gradually go away, even if the suspension doesn't play and the car doesn't get into an accident, check them periodically. The steering with an electric power steering on the column shaft is distinguished by very approximate feedback. Even in the XV40, the steering was better tuned. But the reliability is excellent, except that the rail will knock if the car was running on bad roads. It is treated by replacing the penny and bushings with repair fluoroplastic ones with the new lubricant, they obviously regretted the oil from the factory. The cars are only front-wheel drive and the gearbox is only automatic. As for the mechanical part of the transmission, everything is fine, these are not Koreans for you. Somewhere there is not enough lubricant in the civic joint, then the rust wears away the splines. The resource of the hinges is 300 plus thousand, the covers break only if you drive along the branches and wind the wire. Automatic transmissions are presented in two families. 4-speed U241 can be found with the 2.0 engine before restyling and all other engines work with 6-speed automatic transmissions of the U660, U760 series. More torque automatic transmission U660 works in tandem with 3.5 engines and engines 2.5 and 2.0 after restyling with U760, U761. There is not much to tell about the Isin U241 box. This is a representative of the venerable U140, U240 family that has been installed on Camry and RAV4 since the late 90s. It copes with a 2.0 motor easily and simply. In such a configuration, the transmission is really eternal. It can only be broken by a wild set of circumstances or 500 plus runs without an oil change. On the XV50, the gearbox is trained to work with WS oil, which is thinner than the T4, which ran its versions for earlier machines. The manufacturer doesn't recommend mixing these oils, although they are nominally compatible. And with runs over 300,000, it is better to monitor the degree of slippage of the blocking of the gas turbine engine. Active drivers have chances of its wear with such a run. Well, if the box breaks, then usually the hole. There is nothing to repair. The reason is either oil leakage due to wear of the oil seal of the gas turbine engine or overheating or a mechanical failure. The family of automatic transmission icing, like all modern 6-speed, can no longer be called eternal, but by the standards of 6-speed designs, they are considered very reliable. For example, the recently reviewed ZF6HP, which was installed on BMW, Jaguar and not only, is significantly worse. True, it is worth making an amendment. If this is a 660 series in combination with a 3.5 engine, then from constant braces the box can be rolled up already to 50,000. 
The Vicar 760 with a 2.5 engine works much more reliably, almost with the guarantee nursing 250,000, provided that the oil is changed at least once every 60,000 km. Unfortunately, like all Eisen automatic transmissions of modern design, it doesn't like oil contamination very much and the torque converter lock-up linings GT of this transmission were out very actively during active movement, contaminating it. The typical interval for replacing the linings of the gas turbine engine is 150-250 thousand kilometers. Another problem of the gas turbine engine, in case of vibrations, it can weld the sleeve to the hub. Be careful about the stuffing box leaks. Overheating of this unit always starts with leaks. The valve body during prolonged operation on oil with rare products receives damage due to the body, and you cannot get rid of replacing the solenoids. Unfortunately, the mechanical part was not without serious troubles. The main thrust bearing of the output shaft turned out to be rather weak. It overheats, its retaining ring loosens and turns it, after which the front housing cover needs to be replaced. The bearing is inexpensive, the original one is within 5000 rubles, and the non-original one can be found three times cheaper. The sun gear still costs 4,000 rubles, but the new main body of the box costs more than 50,000 rubles and its restoration with the repair, insert or welding of material and boring of a new seat from 10 to 20,000 rubles and in this case the preservation of the geometry of the case is not always guaranteed. They tried to solve the problem several times. The automatic transmission versions installed on the XV50 have already seriously modified the design of this unit, and yet with 3.5 motors it fails relatively often. Sometimes other bearings of the box also suffer. Some of them are roller and their damage causes the rollers to hit the gears, disabling them. The second serious problem is associated with the forward direct clutch housing, a complete new part assembled with a clutch package costs about 50,000 rubles. Usually it is enough to replace the drum piston with all the clutches, which is much cheaper, but the result is not guaranteed. Well, there remains one more weak point, which manifests itself with high mileage. The rear cover caliper, like in the 90s icing transmissions, wears out the caliper or reins lose their tightness, which causes a drop in pressure in the package of the long suffering direct drum. With runs over 200,000, where of the planetary gear satellite's axles is possible, which causes a characteristic trolley bus sound. The problem is typical for those who like to drive with the breeze with a long-term high load at speeds over 150. Exactly the same problems are typical for U760E, U761E transmissions, but their bearings are almost not damaged. They mainly suffer from wear of the direct drum piston and wear of its clutches, and at high mileage also due to wear of the caliper rings and satellite axles. And of course because of the already mentioned wear of the gas turbine engine. The line of engines on the Camry XV50 is pretty conservative. Base engine 2.01 AZ FE with 148 horsepower cars before styling belongs to the same AZ series that was installed on two generations of its predecessors, XV30 and XV40. The engine 2.5 181 horsepower, the 2ARFE series was also found on the American XV40, but on Russian cars it was only installed on this generation. Good old 2GRFE 3.5 277 249 horsepower remained the same, the modernization was insignificant. First of all, the inlet of the cooling system were improved to improve the uniformity of heating. After restyling in 2014, the cars received a new 2.0 150 horsepower engine. 6 ERFCE series with direct injection. All engines are very reliable, although they are far from ideal. The motors of the 1AZ FE line are considered not particularly successful by Toyota standards. They are reminded of the weak thread of the cylinder head bolts in the block, indeed. On two AZ FE engines, the cylinder head lifted with runs of about 200,000 or after an unsuccessful repair. And the 1AZ FE has no repair dimensions for the piston group. Despite the common statements about non repairability, in practice everything is perfectly restored. The sleeves are inserted into the block, the liners are changed, the liners are of two repair sizes. Otherwise, the engine is extremely reliable, and on the late 1AZ FE, problems with the cylinder head were not noticed at all. Timing chain served 250 plus liners, provided the normal oil is used, even more piston group were with runs up to 300,000, and the absence of overheating is small. Motors are prone to oil appetite only with 250 plus runs and unsuccessful choice of oil. And if everything is really bad, then second-hand units of legal origin as well as from broken or stolen and put on nuts cars cost from 50,000 rubles, the real contract from Japan from 40. 
which makes any series repairs unprofitable, although if desired everything is real. Of the smaller but pressing problems there is trouble with the pump resource, with vortex flaps and contamination of the intake manifold, the clutter of phase regulators, regular contamination of the filter mesh of the phase shifter valves, the design of the hydraulic unit, belt tensioner, wear of the crankshaft damper, pulley and other trifles. You need to adjust the valve clearance every 60,000 if you don't want to change the crankshaft. It would seem that at the age of 10 years it is usually too early to think about this, but there are cars on the market with quite official mileage of more than 300,000. Individual copies have more than 500 on the odometer, and the general twisting of runs it is done easily here increases the chances of mating with age motors to significant ones. Motors of the Newber 2 ARFE series 2.5 liters are minimally different in design from AZ. Also an aluminum block with cast iron sleeves and in general a very similar design. Basically the presence of the face regulator on the exhaust shaft and the absence of EGR are striking. Less noticeably the oil pump is now driven directly from the crankshaft and is located in the front cover rather than in the crankcase. And the balancer shaft unit is driven by low noise plastic gears. By the way, it is because of them that the motors of this line cannot be decarbonized with the most effective additives in oil, the gears lose teeth. The plug has also been thoroughly stranded and the cooling of all cylinders has been improved. A plastic separator has been added to the cooling jacket for better uniformity of heating and accelerating of heating of the cylinders. There is no problem with the threads of the cylinder head bolts in the block. The motor is significantly lighter in comparison with its predecessor, it has a steel exhaust manifold, a slightly lighter block, higher power and efficiency. The complication of the design of 6AR FCE engines with a combined injection system doesn't lead to serious losses in reliability, but the D4S system is significantly more expensive to repair than conventional distributed injection and doesn't really like bad gasoline, everything is banal here. However, there were still questions about the pump resource, the knocking of the VVT1 couplings and the tendency to piston coking at high mileage. And the timing resource decreased to about 200,000 km. The changes of a breakdown are small if the cars do not have twisted mileage, but still you should not consider the motor to be eternal and doesn't require normal maintenance. But as in the case of 1AZ, it's not difficult to find a used or contract one for a reasonable amount, however it will be somewhat more expensive. The most powerful 3.5 series 2GRFE motor is also difficult to break during normal operation, but it is often bought just for the sake of driving, which means that its living conditions were probably not easy. Traffic jams during the day, amateur drag racing at night, fast overtaking of the tracks and the service is not at all like supercars. In such conditions, few motors will be able to release their 350 plus resource, more often everything ends in breakdowns with a noticeably lower mileage. Although by the time the Camry appeared in the XV50 body, all the main problems of this line of engines had already been resolved. They replaced the oil pipe with an all metal one, modified the timing drive to endure a normal resource and the cooling system to prevent overheating of the rear cylinders. Of course, there were still problems with the noise of the phase regulator clutches and again with the pump resource, but in general the engine simply requires a little more attention and control than inline force. It's more sensitive to malfunctions of the cooling system and tolerates overheating worse. It has more complex power systems, more complex intake and a greater load on the gas pump. If you absolutely need a fast Camry, then the investment will be higher. On this information about the problems of Toyota Camry XV50 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.